Hey guys, this is Luke in the Scoundrel's Cantina, and welcome to another episode of A Star Wars Story. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? In this video, we'll be telling you the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, who is most notably seen in the Plagueis novel, as well as having a brief but iconic mention in Star Wars Episode 3, The Revenge of the Sith. As always, we mix in the expanded universe and canon, because we believe that there is no reason why most of it can't fit together. Todd the other scoundrel will be having the honors in narrating the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. So anyway, let's do it! Higo the Mask was a force-sensitive male Mun born sometime between 147 years before the Battle of Yavin and 120 BBY on the planet Maegido, Tsukar the Mask was a banking clan executive. Before he was born, the reigning Dark Lord the Sith, Darth Tenebris, predicted that Kar the Mask's offspring would be strong in the force, so he arranged for Higo's mother to have an affair and bear him a child. Tenebris was searching for a powerful apprentice, whom he would eventually possess thanks to the Maxichlorians, with which his consciousness would survive, hoping to eventually take control of the Chosen One when he would appear. Around the age of five, little Higo found out that he was Force-sensitive for the first time, and at one point used the mind trick on a Mun youngling, convincing him to commit suicide. Eventually, Car Damask would hand Higo over to Darth Tenebris to be trained as a Sith, in return getting a career advancement arranged by the Dark Lord's shadowy sources. Tenebris would at one point name Higo de Mas Darth Plagueis, and after 25 years of being his apprentice and training in the ways of the Sith, finally went on their first mission together. During all this time, Plagueis' father Car de Mas had become the chairman of the intergalactic banking clan and eventually fell gravely ill due to a rare defect in his genes which was passed down to all of his children except for Higo because he had a different mother. Higo's siblings hated him for having a different mother and spent millions of credits for treatments to their illness, all the while Plagueis had a geneticist conduct phony treatments and took pleasure in his siblings' early deaths. Because of this, he inherited all of his family's wealth, as well as the company, Damask Holdings. During the years, Darth Plagueis didn't receive proper training from Tenebris and was usually sent on easy missions because his master simply wanted to ensure that he lived long enough to possess the Chosen One. Because of this, a lot of power that he wielded was self-taught. In 67 BBY, the two Sith Lords traveled to the planet Baldemnik to survey a Cortosis mine where their mining probe went haywire leading to a gas explosion. As Tenebris used the Force to shield them from the explosion, Plagueis felt the dark side inform him that the time to take the mantle of Sith Master has come, so he brought down huge stone slabs on top of his master, after which Plagueis informed him that his death would mark the end of the Rule of Two, and snapped his neck. Immediately after this, Plagueis would lose his powers of precognition because Tenebris went through his plan by infecting him, although after witnessing his death at the hands of his apprentice, Tenebris panicked and left his body. Not long after, Darth Plagueis would have an intruder in his retreat on the planet Sojourn, which was a Force sensitive. As he went out to confront him, it turned out to be a bit secret apprentice of his deceased master called Darth Venomous. With some trouble, Plagueis would manage to defeat Venomous, who would then pledge himself as an apprentice to him, although the Sith Master abducted him as a test subject for his Metachlorian experiments. In 65 BBY, Plagueis, under his public name Higo Damask, traveled to Naboo, which would be ready to partake in intergalactic trade that had worked very well for him. He would eventually notice one of his political allies standing out to him, which was a 17-year-old man called Sheev Palpatine, who greatly impressed him with his natural power and force sensitivity. Plagueis would learn about Palpatine's entanglement with his father and how he opposed this point of view believing Naboo would be better off open to the wider galaxy. Because of his friendships with the younger Palpatine, he would secure the Mosque's holding interests on Naboo. Sheev Palpatine would consider Higo as a father figure which would lead his father, Kasinga Palpatine, to demand that the Mosque stay away from his son. With a bit of manipulation from Plagueis, Sheev eventually murdered his entire family and the Sith covered their disappearances up as well as saw the young man as being insidious and ready to join the Sith Order. Darth Plagueis had a plan of making Palpatine the Supreme Chancellor of the Republic that would bring the galaxy under the rule of the Sith, so he took him as a Sith apprentice and named him Darth Sidious. Soon Sidious's training would begin, which was designed to break him and remake him into a Sith. Plagueis promised them that it would be severe, although they would be free from the Rule of Two, thus breaking the cycle enacted by Darth Bane almost a thousand years ago. In the following years, Plagueis thought Sidious everything he knew to prevent the power he had amassed from being lost, as well as sought to find a path to immortality. He became so powerful. The only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, which eventually of course he did. 
In 54 BBY, the Sith Lords organized an assassination in the family of Senator Vidar Kim, who was their opponent and threat to the Grand Plan of the Sith regarding the planet Naboo. In 52 BBY, Vidar Kim had become an even bigger liability to the Sith, so Plagueis Insidious decided to eliminate him by sending a Maladian assassin who killed him while riding in an open airspeeder with his son, who was a Jedi. The same year, Plagueis was discussing with the Kaminoans of the possibility of creating a clone army to one day destroy the Jedi, hoping to use the Inquirius genetic templates due to their immunity to many Force powers. It would be pointed out that the Inquiry would be extremely difficult to control due to their natural aggression. Not long after, Plagueis attended a meeting on Sereno where he would meet with Jedi Master Count Dooku, who had become an increasingly dissatisfied critic of the Galactic Senate. In truth, Plagueis wanted to recruit Dooku as an insurance policy against the possibility of losing Sidious. He would also talk to sifo and Dooku about an impending conflict for the Republic in the future, which is where he realized that it would be better if the Kaminoans created an army to fight alongside the Jedi before betraying them instead of simply fighting against them. A few months later in Munalus, Darth Plagueis would almost be killed by Meladian assassins and was gravely injured, all the while lashing out at them with the dark side of the Force. Sidious would personally execute the people behind this hit on his master. Plagueis received grievous injuries to the lower part of his face which had been taken off by a decapitator disc. In order to survive, he had to wear a transpirator which covered the lower part of his face, allowing him to breathe. For the next 20 years, Plagueis would devote all his energy in studying the Metachlorians while Palpatine worked on his political career which were the last stages of the Grand Plan. Under Plagueis' watchful eye, Sidious took on his own apprentice who would be known as Darth Maul and be useful to their cause. While studying the dark side of the Force, Plagueis ventured to Korriban, also known as Moraban, to the Valley of the Dark Lords where he sought to contact Long Dead Sith. While attempting to leave the planet, he had a vision of Mark Ragnos who challenged his claim to the title of Sith while answering none of his questions, leaving Plagueis unconvinced about the reality of life after death. He would study the continuity of consciousness after death, as well as the transferescence technique in search of immortality. He could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. Around 42 BBY, Plagueis finally killed Venomous, although managed to resurrect him through the Force, after which he killed him for the final time. Sidious and Plagueis then entered a meditative trance and attempted to mentally reach out to the inhabitants of the galaxy and create life through the Metachlorians. He could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. What they did was in direct violation of the nature of the Force, to which the Force itself struck back in retaliation by conceiving a savior which was prophesied long ago to bring balance to the Force and peace to the galaxy. Darth Plagueis believed that the Force itself actively opposed the Sith's dark side efforts, seeing each setback in this light since the darkness was considered to be unnatural. In 33 BBY, Plagueis and Sidious provoked a key conflict to advance their goals, which was the Inquiry Uprising. This served them as during the conflict against the Republic, the Inquiry killed seven Jedi and were eventually eliminated as a possible threat to the rise of the Sith in the future. Darth Plagueis would soon survive another assassination attempt by way of a nuclear bombardment, which was organized by King Ars Veruna of Naboo. Plagueis would then deal with Veruna himself and killed him, which also served the Grand Plan. In 32 BBY, the blockade of Naboo would be issued by the Dark Lords of the Sith, in which the Trade Federation occupied the planet with their droid armies. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. This was done in order to remove Chancellor Finnis Valorum from office and for Senator Palpatine to take over as Supreme Chancellor, as well as laying the seeds for the Clone Wars. Two Jedi Knights would be sent as ambassadors to negotiate with the Trade Federation, after which the order came to kill them immediately. After that, the invasion of Naboo began ahead of schedule as the Sith made it legal. My lord, is that legal? I will make it legal. During the invasion on Naboo, Plagueis and Palpatine became aware of Anakin Skywalker, a slave boy from Tatooine whom they believed to be the chosen one due to his incredibly high metachlorian count as well as being the Force's retaliation to their unnatural doings. When Plagueis saw the boy, he had a forced vision of a cyborg clad in dark armor, which is when he felt fear for the first time, even though he never believed in prophecies. He immediately ordered the death of the Jedi who were on Naboo by the hands of Darth Maul. Not long after, Plagueis met with sifo at a political gathering hosted by the Supreme Chancellor, where he played on the Jedi's fears, convincing him that a military needed to be created to defend the Republic. Following the Battle of Theed and the death of Qui-Gon Jinn at the hands of Darth Maul, Count Dooku resigned from the Jedi Order and fell to the dark side, becoming the new apprentice of Darth Sidious since Maul was no more. 
At this time, Sifo Diaz approached the Kaminoans and requested a clone army for the Republic with the funds provided to him by Damask Holdings, while Dooku recruited the bounty hunter Jango Fett as the clone army prototype. After this, Sifo Diaz's demise was planned and executed by the Sith. After ensuring that he would be elected the Supreme Chancellor, Sidious decided that the time had come to complete the grand plan without Plagueis as he learned all he could from his master and simply saw him as an obstacle. On the other hand, Plagueis completely trusted his apprentice. The night before the election which Palpatine would win, the two of them made a public appearance at the Opera House after which they went to the mosque's penthouse to celebrate the upcoming success. Their city has got Plagueis drunk with wine while he rehearsed his speech for the Senate. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew, then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. As Plagueis got intoxicated, his apprentice waited patiently until he fell asleep, after which he unleashed torrent after torrent of force lightning at him, basking at the moon's agony and slowly torturing him to death. It's ironic. He could save others from death, but not himself. When Plagueis was dead, Sidious felt sadness and feared that the cause of the Sunnis was because his master had somehow discovered immortality and was about to exact his revenge on him. The following morning, he became the Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic. Senator Palpatine has been nominated to succeed Valorum as Supreme Chancellor. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. If it weren't for Darth Plagueis the Wise, one of the most powerful beings in the galaxy would have never come to fruition, which was Darth Sidious, and everything that led to the Galactic Empire would have never happened. And you, young Skywalker. We will watch your career with great interest. It can be said that Plagueis was in fact a part of the prophecy of the Chosen One since he was one of the reasons that Anakin appeared at that point in time and eventually saved the universe in Return of the Jedi. In 19 BBY, the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise would be told to Anakin Skywalker by Darth Sidious, which would eventually culminate in him becoming his apprentice. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Anyway guys, this is it in the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, and we hope you all enjoyed it, and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you enjoy our content, make sure to check out our Second War channel The Crossroads Inn, and if you want to watch more videos like this one, the links to the playlist for our other Star Wars stories and videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one, and remember guys, God is awesome, may the Force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video, you rebel scum. This party's over.